Yes, yes, yes. Welcome back to The Football Terrace. Thank you very much for tuning in. As always, hit the like button right now, people. Hit the share button too. Big Manchester United news. Uh, review uh, on the Stretford Paddock. Amazing channel. Make sure you subscribe to them, people. They subscribe to me, returning the favour. Big news. I'm going to try and pronounce the name right, but Manchester United will sign the deal he pretty much agreed, according to uh, Christian Fork. He will become a Manchester United, and that is Hakim. I'm going to try and get the surname right. Chalhanolu. I think it's pronounced that way. Chal- Chalhanolu is the player that he's meant to be. I just tagged you on this in Twitter. Thank you, the penalty spot. I appreciate that, my friend. Absolute legend. Make sure you're sharing the stream as much as you can. Um, this is the news. Christian Fork has said it will happen. That's what's being said. That's what's being spoken about. Manchester United deal for Hakim. Chao Hanolu will happen with talks advanced with agent. He told the Stretford Paddock podcast it's true. And I think it will happen because last summer there was already talks with the agent. Will happen. Deal done. Chao Hanolu. I think it's pronounced that way. What do we know about him? That's the big question. Are you excited about this? Are you infused by this deal? Is it something you want? How much of an improvement do you think it's going to make uh, to Manchester? They're ready. A comment there from G Dollar. He says, this guy is bang average. Well, this is the question. H- how good is this guy? I don't know that much about him. I could look at him statistically. Last season, scored in 28% of his games, assisted in 22% of his games, which means... You know, he's creating goals. He's creating and scoring goals in a fair percentage of his matches. In a fair percentage of his matches. But can he do more? Should he do more? Uh, of of course, that's the big, uh, big, big question on that. Uh, penalty spot here in the Super Chat says, Chahanolu. Yeah, I mean, I run it through this thing here. This this is how the pronunciator said it. Hakan Chalhanolu. Hakan Chalhanolu. That's how they said it. So we'll see what's we'll see how that works out. But Z here says we don't need him. This is just more wood wood mess. And I've heard that from a lot of people as well. That's again, I'm not going to judge this guy because I don't know him. Thing is, I never heard of him. I never heard his name before. When I heard we were linked with someone called Hackham, I thought, well, I know, I don't know any, I don't know very many Hackens in football. Don't. Never heard of him. I've got Turkish friends that talk football. They ain't mentioned this guy to me before. <laughs> They've they been chatting about him. Last season, in all domestic competitions, scored 11, got seven assists. It's not bad. Not a bad crosser of the ball. Okay dribbler. But like, like I, I don't know. Um, it's an interesting one. If this is the makeshift, if, if this is the player that we're looking to sign, he's right-footed, but he predominantly plays on the left. The thing is as well, this is what don't make sense about this deal to me. He's right-footed, but he predominantly plays on the left. Can anybody see the issue with that? Maybe that's just me. Terry, really, how have you never heard of him? I haven't. I don't watch European football. So I'm not like, I don't play, I don't play computer games because I don't have the time and I don't watch a lot of European football. AC Milan have not been relevant for a long time. I don't watch their games. I don't know, really know who he is. Maybe his name's come up before, but I'm sitting there like, yeah, I don't know how to say that. <laughs> you know, and this is the point. It, it isn't a player that's been linked with clubs in the past. There was no mention of us talking to him in the summer. If this deal is real, I, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. If this deal is real, it worries me profusely. Legit, I'm worried. Legit, I'm worried about this deal. I, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to deny it. I'm not going to pretend that I'm like, oh, this looks amazing. This looks exciting. It worries me. Shane here of a Super Chat says, this man is to cover matter when he goes. Um, he is a good squad player on a fo- um, on a good. F- sorry. He's a good football, good squad player on a good footballer. Uh, got an eye for a pass and, and good at set pieces. Well, there we go. Uh, Terry, I've watched him. He plays as a 10, but he actually sucks. Poor Ollie. Okay, yeah, I see that here. 25% of his games last season, he's played in the 10 role. 
And a further to, uh, sort of 20% he played out on the left. And he also played 22% of his games as a left-sided, in terms of starting positions, left side of midfield, according to Scout. That's where Scout have scouted him in those positions. I've been watching some of his footage today. I'm very fortunate to be able to be able to watch him score, watch him play, watch him cross uh, with Scout. And like I say, he's all right. But I suppose... Maybe I'm not looking at it from the right direction. Maybe as a backup player, he's okay. If he's free of charge, maybe that's what it comes down to. Um, so a lot of people saying they'd rather play him over matter. That's fair enough. He's probably going to be better than Dan James, I suppose. But is this the alternative to Sancho? I suppose that's the way it's going to be spun. I mean, I'm watching his goals and his pass. It's one. He's all right. I'm not saying he's dead. I'm not saying he's trash. I'm saying... He looks average to me, but he's free of charge. Is this Glazonomics? Original base Andy here says, my AC Milan friend said Hakim Ziyech is good when he is playing good, but he tends to take a lot of shots, um, but he can only pull off screamers. His work rate is good. Oh, maybe that's why Man United won in then. He's got that. He's got that. He's got the work rate thing going on there, boys. That's what he's got. Uh, there we go. Make sure you're hitting that like and share button. Sky plans are now open. Search Football Terrace FC. We're going to be changing that very soon and going to Discord only uh, when it comes to calls coming in. So we're going to build up more of a community on Discord because I've got hundreds of you on LinkedIn. I've got your names. I can't ever put any of you together in groups, meaning, um, well, maybe I can actually. I need to do that and I'll, I'll pass that across and get you all across to that in terms of group chats, but we'll go from that. So we're going to start using that very, very soon. Uh, and we're gonna and we're gonna go from there, and we're gonna add you all to it, and and everything else, blah blah blah. We're gonna add it on discourse. Uh, Josh here, my guy. Josh says at this point, maybe something is better than nothing. A specialist wide could play, could do wonders for a field balance in attack. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're absolutely right. Maybe that l- legitimately is the way forward. Maybe I'm looking at this all wrong. Uh, good point, said Josh. Remember, you can phone in people. Uh, Skype lines are open. I want to hear from you right about now about this potential deal. Christian Fork has said that this deal will happen. He says the deal will go through. What does that mean? What does that mean for Manchester United? I want to know. I want to know what you think. I want to know what you feel. I want to know. I want to know right about now, my people. I want to know right about now, my people. That's what I want to know. Give us a call. Get yourselves on the air. Get your opinions in. Big announcement coming soon to the Football Terrace as well, people. I can't wait to tell you about what we have got in store for you. Big partnership on the way. Uh, Original base Annie says he's not a wide player, though. He's a playmaking midfielder. Do you know what I love about football opinion? It's how everybody just tells you something different. You know, I've had people telling me he's a winger, he's a winger, he's a winger. I am looking at this myself. He, he, he does start 25 last season. Well, in, in general, his career, he played, he, he's played 25% of his games as a, set, as, a, as a 10 at Milan, that is, I think. But then he's played a lot of times out wide. His heat map shows him out on the left-hand side quite a bit, so maybe he drifts. But I'm here to be educated when it comes to this guy. Uh, Marble Halls TV, one of our members here, says... Um, him over Sancho, no, with a big lull. Yeah, that, that's the worry, isn't it? That he's the, like I say, that he's the alternative. If he's the alternative to Sancho, we're in bits. <laughs> we're in bits. Let me tell you that. That's that's a worry. That's a concern for me, bruv. 110% that is a concern for me, if indeed that's true. We've got Abdul on the line with us now. He's calling through. We're going to get Abdul on in a few moments when... When Skype actually lets me answer. There we go. Abdul, welcome to the Football Terrace. What do you want to say, my friend? Uh, I think uh, it's uh, he, the player is just a bang average player because like, I have seen his match against Lille in Europa League. So like when I have seen, it's like just an above average performance. I, I, I haven't seen nothing special in him. But if United gets this deal, I think so. It's just uh, a squad rotation player. Yeah, and, and maybe that's it. And like I've said, may, maybe I'm looking at this from from the wrong angle. Maybe he's going to be a squad player. Uh, a lot of people saying he will be an improvement on Dan James. He'll be an improvement on one matter. Um, yeah, young, right wing. 
So yeah. he, he's an attacking midfielder and and left uh, left on left side. But I don't think he doesn't play in right side. I never saw him playing in the right side. Yeah, well, I mean, again, I just read basic stuff on him earlier that he's right-footed. So I thought, okay, he's a winger and he's right-footed. Maybe he plays on the right. He doesn't. Because uh, a lot of yeah. people a lot of people on socials were talking about us buying him instead of Sancho. So I just assumed left. Um, but then you go and do uh, you, you, you reason. Someone here says the Turkish one matter. Well, look, what I'm going to say about that is, look, listen, one matter in his pomp was a top, 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 top player. So let's not disrespect uh, one matter in that regard. I mean, does this does this signing excite you? Personally, it's if it's like a squad uh, squad rotation player, it's okay. Or else, uh, and uh, one more thing is contract is expiring next next year. Uh, next year, so it's like a free transfer. Then I would take it that thing. To be honest, mm. I hear you. And, and for Mata, it's better for him to leave from the club. So like, uh, at least he can uh, Hakan can uh, fill the gap of the role for Mata. No, I, I, I hear you. I, I hear you on that one. I think that could work in, in that regard. Listen, Abdul, my friend, thank you for calling the show. Really appreciate it. Uh, remember, we're going to be switching across the Discord very, very soon. Everyone that's been contacting us via um, Skype, we'll send you a message on there with the link. Uh, we're going to build a community. We've already got a Discord uh, that is set up. I'm not actually sure if the link for Discord is even in the description below. It's something we really haven't used as much as we should have done. We're going to fix up the description. It isn't even there, uh, the Discord link. I don't know why, uh, but I'll get that added. We'll do a whole show and we'll, we'll push that out to yourselves. Um, I know some of you are part of the Discord group. If you are, share the link now. In the, uh, in, I'll share the link in the comment section in, in a moment. Make sure you're smashing that like button, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very important to the football terrace that you do that. We've got Nabil uh, on, the, on the call here now. Nabil, what are you saying, brother? Hey, Terry, how are you? I'm very, very well. Me? Yes, perfect. All right. So this guy, right? So I think it's a, he's a Scott player uh, because um, if I'm not right, Jesse Lingard's contract is expiring. Guan Mata uh, contract is expiring next year. So he will be at it. And I don't think so. The Jesse Lingard and Mata will get like the contract extension. So it's a, it's a good deal. Yeah, I mean, right. I mean, again, I, I'm not gonna, I'm, I, I'm not angry about it. Yeah. I'm not over the moon about it, and that's because I'm not one of these pr pretend YouTubers who pretends who pretends to have this vat of European knowledge. I haven't seen enough of him play, so I can't judge him. I'm just going by what people say that he's bang average as yeah. a squad player. But maybe we just need, maybe that's what we need now. What I do like about him is that he's 26 and he's not a baby. Yeah. And that that for me is is an important element here that he's not a baby. He's twenty six years of age uh, and everything else. So uh, yeah, I'm quite yeah. I'm I'm quite infused yeah. about that. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And one more thing, he's not a replacement of Jaden Sancho. Um, I think like what Man United needs to focus is a CDM because I have been watching a few games uh, here and there from Manchester United, and like they're like when you when you see them playing. The way currently Man United playing, it's not like we are lacking in on on the winger side, right? It's it's more like they're not clinical enough. But like at the same time, you you see there is a there's something missing in the midfield, which is CDM because our midfielder Pogba or like Donny Van der Beek, they they help back uh, at yep. front some point because we don't have a good good partnership with um, center backs or at CDM. If CDM comes in like a top class CDM, then the Manchester United play style will be more aggressive. So they need to concentrate on on CDM instead of going back to Jaden Sancho. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my opinion. For me, that's what no, I. No, I, I hear, I hear that, I hear that, and I think, I think you make a good point there in, in relation to that, and I think that. Um, my hope is around the Jaden Sancho element is that uh, young um, good footballer uh, Aman Traore. I, I, my hope is that him and Palestri, as they start playing, look really good, and we don't need Jaden Sancho, and and we can mm -hmm. then use that money to invest in in a brand new CDM, another centre back, uh, something along those lines. You get where I'm coming from. That that's the hope yeah. for me that, that that works out. And you know, if Aman Traore comes in in January. And sets the world alight. Then signing um, Hakan uh, Chahanolu, I think it's pronounced. Yeah. Uh, signing him then becomes okay because you've got potency around him. It, the problem is, 
the problem is when it comes to this lad, if we sign him, Mata and Lingard leave and nobody else comes in and Traore and Palestri are bang average, then it becomes a frustrating signing for fans. And I think that that's where the club need to get that balance right. Nabil, you're an absolute legend. Thank you for phoning the show, my friend. Uh, we've added to the we've added the link into the chat. Uh, we've also added the link into the description below. Join Discord now. That's how you're going to be able to phone into the show soon. I know Skype's a little bit old-fashioned, so we're going to be moving away from that very soon. And it's also going to be important because we have a brand new show launching, not on YouTube, and it's coming very, very soon. Announcement's going to be made we are partnering with one of the biggest platforms in the world, starting off with some breakfast shows, moving into making more uh, crossover content, new website potentially on the way. I say potentially because we've got to finalize these things and some big shows in the creation. The football terrace is moving to the next level, but we are not leaving you behind. Everything about the football terrace is you. You are the community. Without you, we are absolutely nothing. So excited about making the uh, about making the announcement. But a lot of the calls and shows are gonna are gonna have Discord involved in terms of you guys contacting us. So go and get yourself signed up in terms of that. Uh, or anybody that's ever sent a message into us via Skype or message you, we're gonna create a big group. Put the Discord link in there. We want to get thousands of you in the Discord group so we can get the, keep the conversations going, keep the community alive, uh, and keep pushing things forward. Um, and no, it's not Twitch. It's not Twitch. Um, are you doing a Rogan-esque Spotify 100 million pound deal? Listen, man, if I was doing it, I, I would wish. It's not, it's not going to be that sort of size, but it's big for us, if you get what I'm saying. So it's going to be big for us. And I don't know why today. Maybe it's the lights behind me are not bright enough. My face looks kind of weird. I'm going to try and fix this. Maybe I need to make things behind me brighter. And it will sort my face out because my face has got like weird coloring. It's not really that. Sometimes this camera is like that. So just every now and then this camera, it just doesn't want to focus properly. But there we go. I should move this way a little bit as well. But there we go. Yes. Yeah, so make sure you're following us on Discord. Uh, we've got Mr. Singh on the line now. Mr. Singh, welcome back to the Football Terrace. My brother, what are you saying? Uh, yeah, I just want to say that really quick. Uh, I think this is a very, very interesting signing. Uh, because obviously Juan Mata, for me, like I, I just feel bad for Juan Mata because he's finished. Because I f like, uh, like I actually loved Juan Mata because as a young United fan, Juan Mata obviously was a player I always uh, grew up watching. But re in recent years, he can't perform against West Brom or Istanbul side. So United fans, we don't really uh, go use Juan Mata every game. We go use him in games versus like Fulham or West Brom. But he can't even perform those games. So like if you so like there's an opportunity to sign a good player, uh, AC Milan or, or obviously on fire this season. And Kalam Hagul uh, and Kalahangulu, I think that's how you say his name, uh, has been a, a good part of that. So I think I think it's a good signing for Manchester United. And obviously you you, you did bring up a point that uh, Palestri or Triole, in my opinion at least, uh, Palestri and Triole won't even be in the first team because from uh, for me um, I don't think Triole will be in the first team. I think that they have they're gonna have to they're gonna have to have a few years of development, and they'll they'll, they'll they will eventually get themselves get themselves into the first team. So I don't really like it when people go um, like try to um, try to not sign a player because of another player. Like we're well, Manchester United, we've had Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Teddy Sheringham, West Brown, all on the bench. So I don't really care, don't care about other players. I just want our club to be good. Uh, listen, I hear you on that. I think you make really good points. The one thing I would say is, look, Juan Mata, you know, he's 32 years of age and I think he, he's come to that point where he just he isn't the player that he used to be. So from my perspective, I think replacing him is important. I just don't have too much of an opinion um, on this individual because I haven't seen him play and I need to be really, really fair uh, across that. My brother, thank you for phoning the show. We really do appreciate it as always. Uh, original base Annie here, oh, I've been a long time viewer of the Football Terrace, says uh, we just had 20 people join Discord. Thanks, people. Absolutely. You're going to see a lot more energy from myself on there as well. Also, make sure you're signing up to Flick as well. Flick, uh, we haven't really been very active on Flick because I don't have the time to run it. Uh, we had uh, Flawless was doing that, but Flawless is busy doing his own thing at the minute, which is amazing for him. So we're going to be uh, getting somebody else to admin that for us um, and, and, um, and whatnot. Um, and actually paying them to do it for us soon. So make get yourself over the flick as well. I'll put the link in the chat for that. And the bill here says, apologies, I can't see your live videos because of time difference. It's 4.30 a.m. right now. Keep up the great work. Also, 
shared Discord link. Thank you. And what I'd love you all to do for me, if you're part of Discord, do me a big favor right now. Get five of your friends right now to sign up. That's how you're going to help the football terrorists keep growing, right? And protect us against... I'll give you an example. We're growing subscribers by thousands a month at the minute. But YouTube doesn't notify them that we've gone live. We've had a lot of conversations with them. Out of our 77,000 subs, only 22,000 people a month get notified. So the only views we get generally are through people that are browsing YouTube and our video pops up and they click on it. Having 177,000 subs doesn't actually mean anything anymore. So you have to create your own groups to announce that you're going live. So we're going to be using Discord for that, Flick for that. And this partnership we're linking in is going to do that as well because we're often going live and no one knows we're going live. You know, you're not getting your messages, your push notifications or anything else. So we need to do more of that. So what I really need to do, I need you to do for me is refer at least five friends Get them to join the Discord group. I know a lot of you are already in there. If we get thousands of people in there, you'll know when the Football Terrace is going live and you will have a direct link into contacting the show. Next up, we've got Mohammed on the line. Mohammed, welcome to the Football Terrace. What are you saying, buddy? Oh, Mohammed, we answered. My brother. Somebody answer the phone. Do you remember that song? That was quality, man. I loved that song when I was younger. Uh, Josh, here's his shout out, Mo. Wanting safe to be the admin. Yeah, can you imagine? <laughs> so I make so I make safe admin. That'd be that'd be legit hilarious, man. Uh, by the way, we're almost ready as well. We've got three new. We, when we get five new members of the, the football terrace as well, we can launch a new emoji, and we've got three new emojis to add in. So we've got some space for that. New emojis on the way as well for all of our members, because again, we respect massively uh, all of our members that put. Uh, you know, that donate and do what they do. And you, you've all seen the, the, them before. Uh, we'll get them. Some of the members post that are watching right now, post all the different uh, emojis that you can have and that you can use. We've got Z on the line with Z. Hakim Chow Hanolu to Man United. It's, it's just not good. That, that, deal, that deal was a shambles, mate. Is he really? It's a, it's a small school. Screen transfer, mate. It's a smoke screen transfer to say it's to go. Oh, look, United are doing their business early. They come summer or come January, come we won't get no one. We'll just why do we need him? We've got enough talent within the youth setup. You know, we've we've already got Bruno, Pogba, Van der Beek who can play in those positions. Why why do we need him? Like, or generally speaking, why do we need him? Like, I saw, I, I, he's a decent player. I saw him from when he was playing that Bayer Leverkusen, but we don't need him. It's, it's, this is just Woodward mess. Bro, I, I get you on this. I, I get you and I understand you um, where, you're, where you're coming from. I'll always try and look for the positives, but how do I say this? Like, the general consensus is just meh. That, that's the word I would use. If you can make a noise about this signing, everyone's like, meh, you know, and I always get concerned about players we're linked with whose names mm. I've never heard before. And what I mean by that is I'm talking social media. Like I know lots of people have heard of him because they play computer games, somewhat Syria, et cetera. Um, some people obviously, you know, one of my, one of my boys is text me. One of my friends I grew up with is Turkish. He's like, bro, I know who he is. What are you talking about? I'm like, yeah, of course you know who he is. You watch Turkey play, bro. Like it's, it's normal for you to know who he is. I would get worried about players that we get linked with that no one on social media is talking about when they play for big teams. Like if we link with some 18 year old who's playing in, 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 in Norway, cool. I get no one's always heard of these individuals. I get concerned about players who are at big European clubs that nobody's ever, ever speaking about and linking us to. Plus he's 26. He's that just something about it. And I can't even quite articulate what makes me think glazonomics makes me think average makes me concerned. Now, if we're signing him fairly cheaply, 60 grand a week on a free transfer, and he's going to be here as backup. And and that's what he does. His role is backup. Then I, maybe I can accept that. May, you know, what I have read that he's better than Dan James, he's better than what Pun Matter is right now. So you think, okay, cool. Maybe he can operate in that position. But my fear is we sign him. And as you say, bruv, nobody else then comes in. And he's the only thing we get. And that, that for me, is a big, big worry because we look at who Chelsea have gone and bought. You know, Chelsea are looking at bringing in Alaba when they don't even, when it feel, when, when onto the surface, they don't even need him. But that's what they're looking at. Man United are looking at bringing in uh, uh, sort of a, a, a Turkish equivalent 
of Scott McTominay, a good player, an average player. That's it. Do you get where I'm coming from, bro? Like, it's, it's a worry yeah, for me. Yeah. Although Scott, he's been great for what he does. I don't want us going out and buying more Scott McTominays. I want us to go out and buy Verratti's. You know, I want us to go out and get Sancho's. I want us to go out and really add some potency, some quality, a genuine competition to this squad and advance us forward. But listen, when you've got holes in your stadium roof, are we really going to go out there and compete with everybody in spending? I'm not too sure. Mate, it's a shambles. It's actually shambles. And this just shows you how bad the club has been ran. Like, is this a deal that all he wants? No, like, it's literally here. Take this or nothing. Take this or nothing. And you're not going to argue. You know, it's like the kid when you're younger, right? And then after this, you want some Adidas trainers and after your parents bring you two straps. It, just take this or walk out barefoot. Like, this is what this board is leaving our club with. Uh, we were linked with this guy, what, years back, we were actually linked with him when he was at Bayer Leverkusen. And he was a decent player there, don't get me wrong. And if we'd got him then, yeah, do you get what I mean? Mm. But we're getting him now. And it's like, okay, you, we knew all these targets. We knew all these targets. And this is when, when people say, this is a prime example. People say, oh, he's been, you've been, you're backed when you have full control over the decisions, uh, the transfers that which are coming in, when you get your actual targets. Not these, you know, these yellow yellow tag players. Like, no one wants them. Like, literally, no one wants him. And after we're going after him, it's, it's a shambles. It's a shambles. Like, and his agents probably thinking, I've done a good job. I sold, I sold, uh, you know, I sold the story to the press saying, uh, I, I said to the press, get Man United's name onto this player and Man United are falling for the trap and come to sign the player. It's a total shambles. It's a total shambles, mate. It's, 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 I, I, and no one can be satisfied with this deal. No one can be satisfied with this deal because I'm telling everyone, I'm warning everyone now, come January, come summer, everyone will, I want everyone to come back to this day and actually think, oh, you know what, Z was right. Because San- there's that, when I look at this deal, I think there's no Sancho or um, Usman Dembele. There's no Grealish. That's what I look at because those are those those are the key signings which we were looking at. And even if we get taken over by Poch, Poch wants Grealish. That, that's not happening now because of the simple fact that we've got this guy and here's the fact, this is your replacement. Mate. We're not going to give you X, Y amount of money to go buy this player. Yeah. Do you know what? I, I, I hear you. See, what I want the club to do because of the position that we're in is, it, it, and again, maybe I'm talking sort of overly idealistically as an example, but my view is very much this. I want the club to have a what I call push down mentality. So bring into the club better players than what we already have or equally good players what we already have. And you create your backup by pushing down. So if you bring in Jack Grealish and Jack Grealish outperforms uh, Marcus Rashford, and that means Marcus Rashford has to be on the bench, it makes our bench stronger. If we bring in average players to replace average players, there is a, there is a distinct possibility that we don't improve as a squad. Do you, do you get where I'm coming from? You know, And I mm-hmm. think for me, you know, when we were linked with, with Longstaff, Yes, Longstaff could come in and be amazing. Uh, Hakim, um, this, 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 this lad from Turkey uh, in Italy, he could come in and actually blow our socks off and go, actually, he was really, really good. But the general consensus of, of the fans here, I don't have a direct opinion because I haven't watched him, is that he's average. And if we're replacing average with average, you're not improving. It needs to be a top-down approach where we're bringing in better quality. If you look at what Liverpool have done. They bring in Jota and they bring in Thiago. Both those players can push for first-team places. They push the current individuals that are in the team. If they make it into the first team, Liverpool's bench becomes stronger because instead of Shakiri and Origi as the main subs coming on from an attacking point of view or a midfield point of view, now it might be Gini Wijnaldum and Firmino coming on uh, from from the bench to, to, to improve a game. Suddenly that gives you more potency from the bench when you are struggling or you need to rotate. And that for me is why you break the bank Bring in Jack. That's why, look, I hope that Traore works in January because then I think for me, there's two positions then that come next. It's Jack Grealish and I'm looking at someone like Ndidi. Take that Sancho money and say, right, let's get Grealish, let's get Ndidi. If you threw Ndidi and Grealish into this team now and let's just say Traore works, suddenly you're looking at not just a very good first 11, you're looking at an exceedingly strong bench. You're looking at a fact that you could have a bench one weekend that has, that has, 
Rash could have Rashford, Cavani, um, Pogba, and and Grealish on it. Do you get where I'm coming from? Or, or, or Greenwood? Yeah. That could be your bench, but, and that's what we need to aim for as a football club. I wouldn't go for someone like Ndidi, to be honest. Um, me personally, how I would like to see the club, I'd like to see the club go for Grealish. Right, I'd like to see the club go for Grealish. I would like to see the club actually try, you know, bully leads into selling us Calvin Phillips that we were originally targeting and before. I'd love to see the club do that. And the club backed out of that transfer when they realised that Leeds were getting promoted and knew that they'll have to pay X, Y for that transfer. These are things that people choose to ignore. And Calvin Phillips automatically frees up, you know, if Pogba stays or goals, you, you can put Greenish, you can, he can make that diamond work, which everyone's crying for. Yeah. And I'd rather that. And I, I still think, where's our number? Where's our number nine? Where's our number nine? Why are we not going for a big number nine? Why, is, why are we still talking about Haaland? Why? It's all smokescreen. United control the press. And, you, you know, I'm hoping these hackers who've hacked them can bloody just expose everything, to be honest. <laughs> like, honestly, because these guys are just taking the absolute piss out of everything. They just, they actually sit there and take the absolute piss out of us. Like, literally just sitting there laughing. Ed Woodward speaking to his son or his grandchild and saying, oh, who's that? You, oh, what are you doing? You're playing FIFA. All right, cool. Tell me who's going to be the upcoming star on FIFA. All right, you know what? To F it. Go on, let's go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go buy him. I'm gonna go buy him. How much you pay him? Oh, dad, you know I had to pay him a bit extra because it's gonna work. Oh, four hundred thousand. How old is he? Oh, he's he's fifteen. Oh, I'll go give him five hundred thousand. Like, it's just ridiculous. Our clubs run like a bloody FIFA team, a poor FIFA team. Like it's, it's someone that plays FIFA an amateur level. That's what it is. Bro, I hear you, man. I, I do hear you and I do understand you and, and I get the frustration. And for me, like I said to a few people before, like this is when I look at this sort of current situation that we're in, it it should resonate with people. Like legitimately, it should resonate with people that there's, there's problems here. Like legitimately, it should resonate with people that there are problems. This deal I get, you know what, there'll be some people watching that quite like this guy. Go, oh, he's a really, really good player. But I think that your issue that I'm hearing here, it's a wider problem, as you say. And this is just, gla I, yeah, I, I, I think it's just glazonomics again and again and again and again. And it's going to, and the thing is, it will just continue to cause us these problems, bro. It's going to yeah. continue to cause and I us see, and I these see problems. people in the comments. I see people in the comments saying, oh, this guy's, what's it called, is, is, um, this guy's level's ahead of what we've got. But what the people in the comments are not understanding is, and it's not me doubting this guy's talent. It's the simple fact that you, you guys will be look, getting gassed off of this transfer. And then afterwards, when we're performing poorly or when Ollie can't play the style of football he wants to play because he ain't got his transfers, then you look agree Ollie out or you start attacking the player. I'm just telling, I'm just calling it how it's going to be. Literally, just call it how it's going to be. Because people need to understand there's a philosophy that comes about football. But the reason why Van Gaal was not successful at United was because of the simple fact he never had the players to accommodate his philosophy. And this is what people need to understand, that without your actual sign um, signings and everything, you can, it's not going to work out. And that's what I'm trying to say, because I fully support Man United more than anything. I'm... I'm, I'm fully behind the club but you, I, all I'm saying is you can't build something if the, the structure and everything that's going on in and around the club is not going right like if they're not backing only with the right chances that he wants because like I said you could want if you if you want a, a PlayStation for example and you get Xbox alright cool they've they got the same games on them but you want that PlayStation you, you, you can't you're not gonna you're not gonna be that <laughs> yeah 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 now, bro, listen, I, I hear you. I hear you. And, and, and as you say, these things are, how do I say this in the right way? Too many of these things get like painted over, if that makes sense. Like people just, I bet you know, this guy will do. And I don't, that's my fear with this, bro. Like I said in the summer, we were lied to by Woodward. You know, they kept on telling the press, yes, we're going to get Sancho. It's going to be okay. We're going to do X. We're going to do Y. We're going to do Z, blah, blah, blah. And it's never happened. And that, that would be my biggest worry. But Z, my brother, thank you for coming on the show and having your say as ever, mate. Really do appreciate it. Um, actually, we're going to keep you on the line. We're going to add Yusuf to the call here. Uh, remember, people, uh, remember, we are going to be switching across Skype 
eventually won't be taking calls anymore. We'll be doing it all via Discord. Um, I'm creating groups on Skype. So if you've ever called in before, we're going to share the link with you. Uh, I didn't know I could create groups on, on Skype. So I'll be letting you all know. But the link for Discord is in the description of this video. I've just posted it in the chat category as well. So make sure you go and sign up to the Discord account. That's where we'll be taking calls. And you'll need that because we have a, a brand new st show starting soon on a different platform. It's massive. It's going to be huge. Um, and Discord is going to be the way that we take your phone calls, etc. It's going to be the same Football Terrace content, which is partnering with people and we want to get you involved, uh, no doubt. Yusuf's with us. Yusuf, what are you saying, bro? Hey, what's up? I just want to talk about uh, Hakan Chanaluglu. Yes. So this guy, he is a baller, but this deal makes no sense. And uh, a lot of people that I know that you could say would know some inside information, say that it's only agent talk. There's nothing in it. He's been offered to United. United looked at him, but they don't want him. Uh, now, the Grealish deal, forget about that one as well. Van de Beek was the Grealish replacement for us. Now, the issue with uh, Hakan Chanaluglu is he isn't a Mata replacement. Maybe a Lingard replacement, but Lingard just parted ways with, uh, with Mina Raiola. So he probably wants to renew his contract with us. Now, some people don't feel so great about Lingard, but there are a couple of points that we got to bring up for Lingard. Lingard is basically the bridge between our academy and our first team. Look at all the youngsters. All the youngsters go for Lingard. He basically mentors them into the first team. So I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Lingard and Mara got a one-year extension. It's disappointing, but it's going to happen. So you actually you actually disagree with Z? You think that the hacking is a, is a, is a very good player essentially? Oh yeah, he he definitely is. He definitely is. He's a very good player. He isn't like a, a dead player or anything. But I don't think he is a player that we're looking at or a player that we would want. He's okay. he's basically just another Bruno or Van de Beek. He's the same position. He isn't as good in my opinion, but he's still a very good football player. So you said. That's what that's exactly my point. I get what you mean. The, the guy's a decent player, but my point being is, do you honestly think we need him, or do you want enough to him coming? You're going to be satisfied now, but if we don't do business happen. in the thing, then what we'll, if we don't do more business? What happens then? I, I don't think there's anything in it. I don't think there's. It's all. It's it's always the same. We get link, linked to those players. They're nearly out of contract. Look at the deal. It makes absolutely no sense. The guy just wants a big money move. I don't think there's necessarily anything that in for us. It's, oh, we always get this paper talk. I don't know why we, we all think it's going to happen 100% now. Yeah, but uh, do you... Okay, let's say it does happen, right? Would you be satisfied with him coming in and no, and, and no one else in that position coming in? He, he isn't a first-team player. He's going to be a Lingard or Mata replacement. Why not? He's on a free. So you'd be He's happy with him, him coming in and, you know, for example, look at um, all he wants. All he's been crying for wingers, been crying for um, a number nine, another centre-back. So you'll be happy with him just coming and no one else coming in because... <laughs> people may say, oh, someone will come in, but this is a United way. So that's my question to you. Because like you, like you said earlier, Van der Beek was, when Aston Villa never got relegated and they saw that the price tag was going to be higher, Van der Beek was Grealish's replacement. So from my experience of seeing how United manage deals, um, this is just, it's not even showing me there's a change. It's showed me that they're just they're ignorant to want to implement change. Uh huh. Uh, I get what you're saying, and there's a misconception around our last transfer window. Mm. Now, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but we we wanted Pau Torres. We really wanted Pau Torres, mm -hmm. and we contacted Pau Torres. We were willing to pay his release clause. The only reason it didn't happen because Pau Torres didn't want to move. He didn't feel it was the right time for him to move. So what did Oli do? He didn't really go for another centre-back. Because 
unlike our previous managers, Ali doesn't go for fourth and fifth options. It's either first or second. And that's one thing that we got to keep in mind. Uh, now, the same, the same goes for Sancho. He wants Sancho and he still does want Sancho. He was willing to get Dembele on a loan, but not a permanent deal. Because all he realizes is that if he waits, he can build a better team instead of rushing it and just getting players that he doesn't think are necessarily the best fit. Now, with Hakan, I really, 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 really doubt it would ever happen. So, but if so it, you're telling me that kid, the kid that we signed on the wing, Palestria and after Triora, right? Yeah, people can say, oh, they're just here for the academy, right? Um, and they're here for the future. I agree, I agree to an extent. But then after it came out that he wanted the DRB from Bayer Leverkusen, and then after as, as well, there was articles saying that this trial kid's actually going to be better than, is actually predicted to be better than, be, um, pre- developed to be better than Sancho. So also, can't you see the smoke screen that goes on? I think... Uh, I see what's happening. But, yeah. but we've spun it in a way that it should have been spun. Traore and Pelestri were going to happen even if we signed Sancho. Not a, no one talks about this. But those two were targets that we had, even if we had signed Sancho. Those two are youngsters that our scout also only made our scouting system. And well, he's have, using you not seen, have you not seen the youngsters that we've got in the academy? Have, we not, have you not seen There's some of the same. youngsters that we've got in the academy that are, are quality as well? You know, what message does it send out to them? Do, do you get what I mean? Like, it, it, yeah. it, we're going to use one. It's a tough We're one. Me personally, me personally, this signing don't make a statement, in my opinion. And I, my thing is, it my does. thing is, my thing is, my I'm I'm just looking at the bigger picture. Don't get me wrong. Okay, if he comes in and is a squad player, and there's additions. I'm, I'm I'm happy. But my thing is, people cannot complain and say Oli gets back. People need to stop saying Oli gets back because I doubt Oli wanted him. Uh, it's just here, here you go. And then when Oli's unable to do his philosophies, unable to play the kind of foot, the style of football, and having to change his tactics around and having to do this, and then people saying he has no IQ, he has no clue what he's doing, people cannot complain because you have to look at everything. Mm-hmm. You have to look at all areas of, of what's going on. You can't, like, and that's the thing. That's yeah, the third, I, 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 and again, this is what. Um... I think what ends up happening is you end up in this sort of situation where, as, as a lot of you just, as you just sort of pointed out and, and sort of said, and I think you make some good points, is that everyone's going to have a difference of opinion on the player that is coming in. Um, and I get some people feel like it's we're working on the on the cheap. And I'm sure, Z, if, if Hacking comes in, you're going to want him to work. You're going to push him to be the best mm. he can. I'm on your side of the fence when it comes to this argument. And I'm not even having a go at Hacking. He, he's, he's, he's probably, as you say, a good I think he's a good football player. Um, probably. I don't know. I haven't seen him play, so I'm not going to overly judge him. But there's just something about the, this deal that, that I don't know what it is. And maybe it's because it's eight years since Fergie, the way they've run. Maybe it's the, what they've done to this football club since they've been there. There's almost that element of I have no faith in, in their approach. But uh, listen, guys, I appreciate you both coming on, having your say. Everyone who's tuned in, we're back today live after Man City's game and after Liverpool's game. I might have a little bit of a special stream for you this evening. Maybe a little bit of tearing the TFT presenters. Uh, maybe, 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 maybe that's what we'll do. Make sure you hit that like button for us this morning. If you've ever spoken to us before uh, via LinkedIn, we're going to be sending you some messages today to get yourselves over and signed up to Discord. That is where we're going to be primarily um, taking calls from moving forward. By sort of Monday, that's where it will be. We'll keep Skype open for a few more days. We're going to get it through Discord. Uh, it's a real great community that you can sort of sit within and use and, and, and talk to each other in. We'll be sharing when we go live from Discord as well, so you know when the Football Terrace is actually posting something because notifications do not happen. So if you subscribe to the channel today, make sure you sign up to the Discord element. Uh, it's going to be very, very important that that gets done. Uh, listen, until then, everybody, take care of yourselves. Goodbye, God bless, and we'll see you all again very, very soon. Peace.